Hi, it's Craig, WJ6F. Are you looking for different ways to run power through your shack? If so, I've got a few items that might interest you right after this. I want to thank MFJ for sending these out to me to try out and to show everybody. We have the MFJ 1124, 1126, and the MFJ 1106. The first one we have is the MFJ 1106. It contains seven Anderson power pole connectors, which are connected in parallel, permitting one input and shared six output. You can use any of the seven for your input and then the remaining six for your output. The total current capability is 30 amps. It measures two and a quarter inches wide, one inch high, three and three quarter inches deep. The 1106 can be used either in the shack, but is really handy when it comes to doing portable, soda, or poda. Let's take a look inside and see what makes this thing tick. Okay, this is the top side. It's got everything marked down, it tells you which model number, and all the connection points look to be well soldered on this side. You can see on the back side, there's a few of the connection points that could use a touch-up of solder. Luckily, the owner's manual does not void the warranty when you try and fix your own parts, which is really good of MFJ to allow that. The first one I'm going to show you how well it works is the 1106. It's powering up a Yaesu FT2980 and the MFJ849 power meter. Got it set for 80 watts on the 2980. It has no problem. Next up is the MFJ 1124. It has four Anderson power pole connectors and two binding posts. It measures eight inches wide by one and a quarter inches high by two and three quarter inches deep. The input is fused at 40 amps max and they give you a nice long cable to be able to connect this to your power supply and run it a good distance. The binding post can take up to 35 amps. Let's take a look inside this one. Here you have the top of the board, you got your fuse holders, the power pole connectors, and where your binding posts go and their fuse holders. And looking at the back of the board, it looks like all the solder points were really well done. Okay, the next one is the 1124 with the same setup. Have the power cables running to the back of the power supply, connected to the lugs. And here we have the MFJ 1126. On the left side you have three that are unswitched and the last five that are switched. If you want to keep your radio constantly on, just plug it in on the left side. If you have power meters and stuff that you would turn off periodically, use the right side. I've heard the owner's manual, the power rating for this is each unswitched outlet can handle up to 40 amps, but all unswitched outlets combined should not have a total of more than 40 amps. Similarly, switched accessory outlets should not have a combined total of more than 20 amps. It is the operator's responsibility to ensure that the equipment connected to those power strips is within these power ratings. And like the 1124, it comes with a good length of power cable so that you can put this virtually anywhere in your shack. The fuses used in this one and the 1124 are the standard ATC-ATO automotive fuses. The maximum input for this strip is 40 amps. Let's take a look inside this one. And on the front side you got your fuse holders, power poles. You got the meter down here and the power switch. Everything on here on the front side looks to be clean. And on the back side of this one everything looks to be well soldered. And here we have the 1125. As you can see, the meter went up. And everything works perfectly. These are not the only power strips that MFJ has. In fact, they have two other ones that have the DC volt meter on them. And that is the MFJ 1128 and the MFJ 1129. One of the nice things is when you buy one of these power strips, MFJ gives you a bag of extra fuses and power poles. At the time of filming this video, the 1106 was going for $49.95, the 1124 was going for $79.95, and the 1126 was going for $99.95 on the MFJ website.
I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. While you're here, check out one of these other videos. And thanks again for watching.